Video Game Memories Number 1 by Jeff Height. Brought to you by writingsofdan.blogspot.com. In the beginning, there was Pong, or so I am told. I am not that old, though I am close. I have actually written code using punch cards and played games that required all keyboard input because the joystick wasn't really a real thing yet. I was born in the 70s, and despite that fact, I was pretty darn near 30 before I had ever played a video game that used a controller that didn't look like an upside-down T. I take that back. When I was a teenager, my brother had a first-generation Nintendo that he shared with me, and yes, the magic up-up-down-down-left-right-left-right BA select start does actually mean something to me. Then again, so do IDDQD and IDKFA. Despite that nearly useless knowledge, these are not my earliest video game memories. Those come from much earlier. I don't remember how old I was when I first saw it, that magic screen-projecting device, but it was the most wonderful thing I had ever seen. It was two and a half hours away from my house, and it belonged to my older cousins, but my brother and I spent many a night talking across the room about how wonderful it was to play Pac-Man. It didn't matter that we never had enough playtime to make it past level one. It didn't matter that every time we got our hands on the controls, that we had to deal with the horde of screaming people in the room, telling us which way we should go and how we should watch out for that ghost right there. Can't you see it? Are you blind? You're headed right for it. It didn't matter that one half of the controller set had been modified for a lefty, and you had to play left-handed or the fire button was just totally in the wrong spot. Something I still thank them for, since I can now do most things with both hands. What mattered was that we got to play, and the stories we would tell each other about that time were no less than legendary. You see, my cousins were the first people we knew that had a video game. We had seen them at stores and begged our parents for quarters to play them, but this was an actual system in their home, and you didn't need quarters, You just needed to wait your turn. Sometimes the line was long enough that you could have earned that quarter, but it was always worth it to sit in that darkened basement and play the three turns you got being eaten by ghosts well before you could leave the bottom half of the screen. After that, we did eventually get a computer. It was a Texas Instruments 80 with a sound modulator and tape recorder backup. We had three games at first, Hunt the Wampus, a version of Space Invaders, and Parsec. But there was that tape backup, and it had to be used. My father was an engineer, at the time working for the Air Force, and was the first computer nerd that I ever knew. He had a plan for us. We were going to learn to write basic code. He got us several books and showed us how we could follow the instructions to write our own -own choose-your-own-adventure games, He even taught us how we could take instructions from one program and put them in another program so that you could have a cooler, more complicated game. It didn't take long before I was writing my own very primitive games. Heck, I even wrote one that used a joystick in a very limited way, but it used it. That was many moons ago, and even though developers now ask me never to write code ever again, it was how I got started in my current career field. Thanks, Dad, for turning me into a computer nerd. Those were good times, and we did move on from there. When I begged for a Commodore 64, we bought an IBM clone. I learned DOS and started my writing career. But it was not just for writing, it had games too, you know. King's Quest, Wizardry, and early flight simulators took a large amount of my days. They might have been in black and green, the characters might have been stick figure-esque, and I never did figure out how you could gnaw at something and miss. But those video games were legendary things, and if you were patient enough and held your mouth just right, you could sometimes even save your game. Jeff Height is primarily a husband and father, but when he is not at home, playing with the ever-growing number of kids, he is an IT professional by day. In his spare time, he is a writer, one of the co-founders of Flying Island Press, and the managing editor of Pirate's Cove. He lives by the motto, I am a pirate, your rules don't apply. Thank you for listening, and you will hear a new guest blog post from someone else on their video game memories 
every Tuesday and Friday. And you will hear a new one next Tuesday. Tuesday.